Hello YouTube, this is Daz of the Cameraman. Today is Sunday, July 23rd, 2017. And it seems it's that time again to do another update video on the All Sky cameras, which are often used supposedly to show us Nibiru, Planet X crossing the sky. This seems to be a favourite site with the Nibiru watches, and they go to these All Sky uh, webcams and uh, post these videos supposedly showing Nibiru crossing the sky. For example, here is the Deakin uh, webcam in Australia. Let's take a look at that one, and you can see the recent time lapse from this camera. We're looking at a series of six images of the All Sky camera from Deakin, Australia. Now, often we see these uh, apparent objects crossing the sky, and people love to make these videos. Now, I saw on Facebook the other night somebody had posted one of these camera images from a site in Rome and announced that Helion and Nibiru could be clearly seen crossing the sky. So we're going to take a look at that one next. So here is one of the images that was presented to me the other night on Facebook, supposedly showing Nibiru crossing the sky from west to east. Now, which is interesting, because as we know, the sun, the stars, the moon, and so on, all cross the sky from east to west due to the rotation of the Earth. The Earth takes 24 hours to make one rotation from west to east, and because of that rotation, the stars, the sun, and the moon all appear to cross the sky from east to west in the opposite direction of the Earth's rotation. Yet here we see this object apparently crossing the sky from west to east in the opposite direction to the motion of the sun. Let me back that up. I'm going in reverse now. And going forward, you'll notice that the motion is in the opposite direction to that of the sun, which is this here, of course. So that's the first clue that what we're looking at is actually a lens flare. Now, when I saw this posted, um, I said that I would keep an eye on this camera and would endeavour to prove that this was in fact a lens flare and not Nibiru or some other object in the sky. So I fired up my trusty sequence downloader, which captures the whole sequence continuously instead of just six Im images at a time. And I left my computer running overnight, and uh, these are the subsequent images. Now, we did run into some problems in that we had a lot of cloud appear. So you can see the object here is sort of fading out. You can always tell when the sun is at its brightest because we have this vertical line, which is due to the image sensor in the camera overloading. This is called CCD bleeding or CCD blooming, and you can tell that it is caused by the sensor overloading and not something actually in the sky because we can see this vertical line actually inside the, uh, the camera housing. It's not just confined to the sky. You can see it spills over into the surrounding area. Watch what happens to our Nibiru as it gets nearer to the horizon and is affected by the cloud obscuring the sun. We can see that it disappears as soon as the sun is obscured enough that we can't see these vertical lines very clearly, we can just faintly see them, um, but we can't see our Nibiru anymore. But let's keep going. If we look really carefully, we can actually see that our Nibiru extends out into this outer area. And we're actually going to have a clearer view of that a little bit later too. But let me step through. Now just here, if you look very carefully, right there, you can see Nibiru. I'm going to step backwards and forwards. Now you can see that our supposed Nibiru object is actually the side of the horizon. And if I keep going a few more frames, you can see it just there on the inside of the camera housing. So obviously it cannot be an object in the sky. But anyway, I left my downloader running. It's, been, it's still running right now, in fact. And uh, I'll just step this through. We're into night time now. And uh, now the sun is about to come up again the next morning over here in the east. And let's watch what happens when the sun comes up. So you can see the sun is just skirting the horizon there. Here 
here comes the sun. Now, while you were watching up here, I bet you didn't notice what was happening down here. Let me keep progressing the image, and you can see here is our Nibiru object in the sky again. Crossing the sky, and this is about where we picked it up from the day before. But let me run it backwards again, and you watch what happens to our Nibiru. As I'm going backwards, keep an eye on Nibiru down here. And you can see it is clearly within the camera housing. So that's when it first appears, when the sun is nice and bright above the horizon. So let's run it forward again, one more time. So we're going to complete the, the day's viewing. And watch what happens to Nibiru as it crosses the sky. Now when we got to this point yesterday, we were clouded out. And we lost clear sight of Nibiru. But this time we've got no cloud. Let's, let's watch what happens. Now you can clearly see that Nibiru is inside the camera housing which of course means it is in fact a lens flare. So there we go folks, once again whenever you see these uh, supposed Nibiru objects crossing the sky in the all sky cameras then that's all it is, it's a lens flare as we can clearly see when we watch the full sequence. Now people like uh, Jeff P and Steve Olson and the other usual suspects love to post just a few images or even a single image and claim that we're seeing Nibiru. But using Sequence Downloader we can actually capture the, the full sequence. Now I was going to show in this video how to use Sequence Download but I'll upload that as a separate video so that this video is not too long. Thank you for visiting my channel. Please be sure to subscribe. For further discussion, please check out my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. You'll find a link in the description area. If you'd like to support my work, you'll find a PayPal link on the About tab of my channel. Your support will be most appreciated. Thank you for watching.